and it doesn't work, tear down the roof. Amen. When you pray and it doesn't work, sing. When you sing and it doesn't work, pray. Because there is always a roof that has to be torn down when the door is blocked. Because Lord God did not and does not still feel that you be stopped. What have you been looking for? What is it that you're looking for from God? And the experts have told you this. And those who know better than you do have told you that. And they've reached their verdict. And they've said it is not possible. It is impossible for you to conceive. It is impossible for you to be healed. But we can give you a medication that can help you manage it. But it will not be cured. Be strong. Be strong. If you take this medication, we can manage it. We lower it. And that is the door. What the doctors have said is the door. Try the roof. That is all the alternative that will yield the result is always the crazy part. It doesn't look sensible. It doesn't look wise. How can you be fasting 32 days? Are you out of your mind? How can you be waking up at 12 midnight and be praising God? Are you dumb? The alternative that brings result is always crazy. It looks crazy. The world will laugh at you. It looks crazy. Or you think by shouting, this man, this son of God can... Come on, Atinius. Shut the hell up. Sounded crazy. Because in our culture, we believe that the person that shouts is, must be crazy. Because the same do not shout. They do their things quietly. But when you shout, when you dance around, people will look at you in the church like, we have too much gentility in the church these days. Too much gentleness. That's beyond the prescription of the Holy Spirit in Galatians 5.21. That's the gentleness of the Spirit that the Bible is talking about. Not gentleness and your aggression to receive what belongs to. You have to fight for it. You have to break the roof. You have to shout. Because Jericho, Jericho is tough and solid and strong. Jericho is fortified. The Bible says, how can you enter into the house of a strong man and keep him happy? Or spoil him. How can you spoil him unless you keep him captive? The wall was thick, and the iron gates could they are not penetrable. So Israel could stand outside for decades and not make any progress. But they shout would make a difference. No Jericho. No Jericho. Yes, that me. All you need prior to confronting your Jericho is to get your mind circumcised. Get your mind in the right place. Cut out the flesh of the negativity. Get to the bone of the reality. Cut out the noise. Circumcise your Get rid of that thing in your mind that exalts itself above God. Throw out of your mind that thing that offends God. Sometimes people talk about those.
those things. In those days I was an NCO. A couple of my NCO friends came and said, Oh, stop saying you know. You know, the rumor going around, my soldiers are going around saying that I'm unapproachable, that I'm not accessible. But you know me, I have an open door policy and I help these people. But they're going about telling other people that I'm somebody that they cannot approach and talk to. I say, you might, and I tell them, you might want to reassess yourself and see if there's any act of truth in what they're saying. Because if more than enough people are saying it, there must be some element of truth in it. So it's up to you now to reassess and reevaluate yourself and see if you are that person you think you are. Because most of the times we see ourselves in the eyes, through the eyes of other people. Sometimes you can stand in the mirror and you will not still see who you are. So if people are saying that you're stubborn, you might. Think about it. Right? Find ways to change. If people are saying, oh, he's haughty. He's so proud, proud and prideful. There's nobody that can approach him. You might want to cut out those flesh of pride so that when you're ready to approach Jericho, you can only shout and Jericho will fall. Because when you approach Jericho unprepared, your shout might bring the wall towards you and crush you. Instead of the wall falling in. That's why you have to get your mind circumcised. This is a new year, 2014. Our year of grace and completion. It's ironical that we will get to 31st of December this year and still there is no completion in the lives of people. Then we make God and the vision of God a liar. But God doesn't lie. What he says, he has done. Not what he says he will do. What he says he has done. Read the scriptures. Every blessing of God is in the past participle. He said by his stripes you have been healed. Not you will be healed. Every blessing of God is in the past participle, which means it's been done. Amen. And if this is a year of grace and completion, you must be witnessing grace and completion in your life right now. Amen. But most of the times, be careful. We don't measure grace and completion by how much new cars we've bought. Amen. Or how much proceeds our stock in the Wall Street has yielded. But we measure them by the excellency of our spirit. How much we are willing to open up our mind to the use of God and to his glory. That's how much. So there should be no reason where there shall be abandoned projects. I mean life. Because our lives are a project, God's project. And if God does not abandon his project, why would we declare this year a year of grace and completion and then we come to the end of the year, there is no completion in our lives. The songwriter says, count your blessings and name them one by one. It will surprise you what the Lord has done. But for some of us, we find it hard to even count one. Other than that, we are still breathing. Is now God biased? Is he a God that gives to some and withholds from some? Is he a God that looks at the face before he distributes his blessings? No. God's blessings and principles are preset. They are preset. So it takes Nothing to confidence who you are, where you come from, where you've been, and what you've done. As long as you hit the right buttons, because it is preset, it comes out. The ATM machine is programmed to accept the right cards and the right pin numbers. So even if you stick the right card in and put the wrong pin number, Nothing will dispense for you. Because it's been programmed and preset to 
receive and assert and approve the right card and the right pin number, if you put the wrong pin number and the right card, it will not work. If you put the right pin number and the wrong card, it will not work. And sometimes you go to another ATM and you bank with another bank and it tells you before it dispenses, 250 will be charged. Do you agree? And you say yes. <laughs> Some of us have come to a point where the Lord has said, do you agree? We hit no. And then we go all the way back to begin the process again. Because we are busy listening to the noise around us. Cut through the noise. Cut through the noise. The voice of the Lord will not persuade you longer. It is the devil that keeps persuading you like when you give out your phone number to a car dealership showing that you're interested in a car, they will call you 200 times a day. They will call you all month long. That's exactly what the devil does. The devil will ping you. He will lodge you. He will he will do everything to get you distracted. But still, the still small voice of the Holy Spirit will be telling you what to do. So if you have a wall before you, there is Jericho standing before you. It is not the Lord. Know it today that it is not the Lord that will push down the walls. It is you. It is you. There were instances when God held down stones from heaven and killed their enemies. There were instances when God laid ambush by himself and killed the enemies. But on an instance when God says, this is what you will do, know ye that the Lord will not come down to do it for you. If God says, march around six days, shout on the seventh day, then you know that the Lord will not crumble the walls for you. Likewise in our life, there are certain walls the Lord will not crumble. There are certain walls the Lord will not crumble because he has given you the prescription on how to crumble your wall. It's up to you to apply the prescription and crumble your wall or do for two days and become like Naaman. Naaman, go and wash seven times and you'll be made whole. You wash the once, twice. He said, you know what, you know what, I'm done. This is our attitude sometimes when we are in need. You think that they prayed. You begin to count how many churches you've been to and how many men have laid their hands on you. And you say, yeah, but it's not working. It's not going to work. Have you tried the roof? Have you tried the roof? A miracle is in your hands. Your deliverance is in your hands. Your breakthrough is in your hands. But as a child of God, there will always be a Jericho standing tall. As a child of God, there will always be voices be clouded. your ears to ring. There will be voices that will try to shut you down. There will be circumstances that will try to shut you down. There will be words that will prove insurmountable. Well, Daniel tried it, it did not work. I know Jude filed the same application and it was denied. Your destiny is not Jude's. And your destiny is not Daniel's. Your destiny is that your wall will, will crumble. Your destiny is Jesus will halt and say, bring him to me. But the authority in your voice, the circumcision that your voice has witnessed will all determine how quickly and how fast 
Christ. Your walk comes shall stand on our feet. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you.
Today she has five kids. Amen. Amen. A couple of years ago, they said she was diagnosed with cancer. Today she is cancer free. Amen. Not because of the medication. Not because she underwent any chemotherapy. That is what God can do. There is nothing that God cannot do. Tell me what God cannot do. Tell me what God cannot do. Tell me one thing that God cannot do. Is it God that is swelling or your faith that is swelling? Is it God that has failed all your disbelief? Do you listen to what the man has said? Or what God has said? Not. There is nothing he cannot do. There is no obstacle that cannot be defeated. There is no obstacle that cannot be defeated. Give me an opportunity right now. To cast your mind on that problem and shout at that problem. When we raise this song again, fix your mind on that problem and begin to shout at that problem. But before we do, let this moment to circumcise your mind. What have you been listening to? What have you been arguing about? What have you wasted your time talking about? Take this time to circumcise your mind. Because I tell you, when you shout at that Jericho, it will crumble today. Today, today. Amen. Amen. And then you have a reason to be. Take this mind, take this time to circumcise. Oh, you are
that you shout at us right now. I want you to step forward. If you visualize something in your life that you just shouted at, step up. If you did not, stay back. If you did not visualize everything that you shouted at, stay back. But if you visualize something that you shouted at right now, step forward. Oh, uh-huh. 